which is called in Hebrew Bethesda, having five porches. And these lay a great multitude of sick people, blind, lame, paralyzed, waiting for the moving of the water. For an angel went down at a certain time into the pool and stirred up the water. And whoever stepped in first after the stirring of the water was made well of whatever disease he had. Now a certain man was there who had an infirmity 38 years. When Jesus saw him lying there, he knew that he had already been in that condition a long time. He said to him, do you want to be made well? The sick man answered him, Sir, I have no man to put me into the pool when the water is stirred up. While I'm coming, another step down before me. Jesus said to him, Rise, take up your bed, and walk. And immediately the man was made well, took up his bed, and walked. I want to use for a subject today. Do you want to be healed? Do you want to be healed? All right. Despite what we've been told down through the years, Many believe that we're supposed, everybody's supposed to have a Mercedes Benz and live in a mansion and have a million dollars in their pockets. I truly believe God wants us to be blessed. We talk, we talk about it every week. We desire that we would live and, and, and live in abundance. But that's not, that's not God's main goal for his people. But his goal is that we might be like him. All right. Jesus had struggles while he walked on earth. But yet he was victorious. And I love what Hebrews 4, 15 says, For we do not have a high priest who is unable to sympathize with our weaknesses. But we have one who was tempted in every way that we are. Yet he was without sin. In other words, Jesus went through everything that you're going through right now. Yet he was victorious. And that is his desire for us today is that even in your hurt, even in your pain, that you walk victorious. For the same time, we got to get into text. Jesus, he's at a Jewish festival. He comes to a place called Bethesda. Bethesda means house of mercy. When he gets there, there are lame people, there are paralyzed people, there are, there are blind people, there are people with issues all over Bethesda because there were pools. They said there were five pools. Each one of these pools were about the size of a football field. And what would happen is that they believed that an angel would come and begin to stir up the water. Whenever the water start moving, they would jump into the water because they believed that there was healing power in that water. Right. Many believed that it was a, a superstition uh, that whenever the water started moving, healing came with the moving of the water. Just, just like we have our superstition that you know, I ever heard my hand start itching. Ooh, money is on the way. All right. Yeah, y'all, y'all have no superstition. All right. That black cat crossed the road. Ooh. All right. Two people walking together, y'all split the pole, and somebody goes, "No, we can't go around. No, you can't split the poles." Right. Ever broke a mirror and Lord, have mercy, I got seven years of bad luck. But we all have our superstitions. All of these people are here, and Jesus comes and talks to this man who has been lame, who has been paralyzed for 38 years. Y'all miss it? All of these people are here and Jesus comes and talks to this man. This blessed me because even though the man couldn't get to Jesus, 
Jesus got to the man. And you need to know it doesn't matter where you are, Jesus can get to you. I don't care if you're in the club, he can get to you. I don't care if you're in the crack house, he can get to you. I don't care if you're in a hospital, Jesus can get to you. Uh, this past week, uh, we were on a job site and uh, we was taking down some old stairs and we were building a deck. This deck is 10 feet off the ground and, and me and this other guy, we are holding up the old stairs while the other guy cut the nails. And when he cut that last nail, those stairs we thought were light, they were heavy. And they start coming down on me and the other guy, and the other guy, he bailed on me. And all I could say was Jesus. Because I could not hold all that weight. At the same time, I said, I'm about to fire you. You don't need one here by myself. And all I said was Jesus. And something just came over me and I walked away from under my steps. The brother, he looked at me, he said, man, you strong. He said, I, I, I thought those things were going to crush us so I ran. I said, there's something on the inside of me. There's something about when I began to call on Jesus. I was deep down in some woods, but Jesus heard my despairing cry came and he saw about me. No matter where you are, he can come and see about the show. If we're going to be healed, he asked the question, do you want to be healed? If we're going to be healed, All right. there's a couple of things we got to do. All right. The first thing is, you have to get rid of the excuses. All right. All right. Jesus comes to the man and he says, do you want to be healed? And the man began to say, uh, and when I get to the pool, everybody else bypass me and beat me and get in the pool. He says, nobody will help me get in the pool. All right. By his response, you would have thought that Jesus had asked him why you can't get to healing. But Jesus says, do you want to be healed? Now, now, we can look at this man and say, how can he be in the presence of Jesus and make all of these excuses on why he can't be healed? But how do you know we come to church every Sunday? All right. We come with our problems. We pray to God about our issues. And Jesus asks the question, do you want to be healed? Right. And we start making excuses. God, you, you don't know. I've been in this issue for so long. God, God, God I'm trying. I've been dealt a bad hand. I'm dealing with generational I, Do you want to be here? I don't have enough money. Do you want to be here? God, this person hurt me so bad. Do you want to be here? God, nobody cares about me. And God is saying, I'm not asking you anything, but do you want your healing? We make all of these excuses. God said, I didn't ask you about your excuses. Your healing ain't coming from the pool. Your healing ain't coming from the church. Your healing ain't coming from the person who hurt you. Your healing is not even coming from the pastor. Your healing is coming from Dr. Jesus. Stop talking about your problems and start talking, telling your problems how big your God is. I, I, I was, uh, throughout this week, God has always talked to me in, the, in my meditation. He says, nothing happens until it's spoken. Y'all, yeah, I'm going to say it again. Nothing happens until it's spoken. If you go back to Genesis 1 and 1, he said, and let there be, and there was. And let there be, and there was. God spoke it, and it came. And many of us, we keep speaking negativity in our lives. Oh, I'm so tired. Guess what you just spoke? Tiredness in your life. God, I'm so hurt. That's all you talk about, and you just keep bleeding. You keep bleeding. You keep bleeding. Because that's all you keep speaking. But there, there ought to come a point where you say, God, I'm delivered. God, I'm walking in peace. God, I'm walking in the joy of the Lord. God, God I, I give you my broken. 
in this God. God, I'm, I'm, I'm dealing with this, but God, I, I speak deliverance in my life. There comes a point where you gotta start speaking those things because nothing happens until it's spoken. So he says, you're gonna be healed, you gotta stop making excuses. The second thing is this if you're gonna get your healing, you gotta get up from what hurts you. Jesus asked the question, do you want to be healed? Now this was a crazy question. Because this man had been lame for 38 years. God, don't you think he wants to be healed? Why would Jesus ask the question, do you want to be healed? After I read the text a few times, it hit me. This man has been coming to this pool a long time. He's been dealing with this issue for 38 years. You're trying to tell me he could not get in this pool after all of these years? He told Jesus, while I am coming. Now, I don't know if he rolled there. I don't know if he crawled to the pool. But one thing I know is he was able to get to the pool. Y'all miss it. He said, I'm coming to the pool. As I'm coming, people are jumping ahead of me. When you want to be healed, you'll do whatever it takes. If it was me, I ain't going home until I get my healing. If it was me, it took me all that I could to get to the pool. I'm going to sit in the pool until it starts moving again. If it was me, I'm going to stay here all night long. So if it does start stirring, if it, if it does start getting trouble, I'm already here. All I do is fall in the pool. When you are hurting, you do whatever it takes to get your healing. But here's the problem. I believe Jesus asked the question because some of us want to be healed. But we like the attention. You, you like for people to feel sorry for you. You like for folk to always be checking on you. You like for folks to send you a cash out. You, you, you like the attention that you get because people know you're sick. Now, not only that, some of us, we want to be healed, but we enjoy the sickness. I know this relationship is bad for me, but it feels so good. Slot machines are killing my bank account, but I'm going to quit when I hit big. I know the drugs ain't good for me, but it just relaxes me. Pastor, pray for me. I need to get delivered from this thing. All the while, you got your phone and you get a thing. What are you doing? I'm waiting for you to call me. I'm on my way. Pastor, deliver me from this thing. You don't want to be delivered. You say you want to be healed, but it's good. It feels good to you. Somebody gonna get out of here today. I don't know why I keep wearing these slot machines, but somebody must need to be delivered from it. I don't know none of y'all who go to. Don't be talking about pastor preaching about me. I don't know. All I got is twenty dollars for you, but you want to go? We can go. But yet. You can't pay your life, do you? It's hurting you. I want to be healed. But I enjoy my sickness. I'm trying to help somebody here too. It comes to a point where you get sick and tired of bleeding. You say, if only I could just touch the hem of his garment. If only I can be made whole, whatever it takes to get my healing, God, I'll do it. Jesus tells the man, he says, take up your mat and walk. In other words, get up out of your situation. Pass this hard. Get up out of the situation. Because here it is. You're stronger than what you think. Yeah. He did not heal the man before he got up. 
He healed the man after he got out. Your faith is what's going to heal you. Your healing is found in your obedience. It's hard because you refuse to get up. But when you get up, God gives you strength to get up out of that situation. Tell you, baby, get up out of that mess. Listen, so he says, you're going to get your healing. You have to get rid of the excuses. You have to get up out of your mess. Last, he says, you got to get away from negative people. After Jesus told him to take up his mat, I believe he told him to take up his mat. Because if he didn't tell him to take it up, he was so used to being on the mat, he would go back to the mat. And some stuff God delivered us from. Because that's our comfortable place, we go back to it and lay that down. Literally. <laughs> Somebody got that. But Jesus, he told the man to take up his mat, and take up his mat, begin to walk. And while he's holding his mat, there were some people called the Pharisees. The Pharisees come to him and say, Why are you carrying your mat? Don't you know it's the Sabbath? The Pharisees had these six hundred some rules and laws that you couldn't do this, you can't do that. One thing you, you couldn't you couldn't do, you couldn't lift anything. And then this man is carrying his back because he's been delivered. He's been healed. But these Pharisees, I call them negative folks, I, you can call them church folk. Instead of them rejoicing about his healing. They were more concerned about a room. They, they were more concerned about the traditions of the law. And how many of those people are more concerned about their opinions of you than they are about God dealing with you? But there are some Pharisees in the church today. I guarantee you somebody looked around and said, why did they come to church with those clothes on? That, that, that dress is too short. Yeah. His pants are too tight. When people just come to me with that kind of stuff, I say, you're so focused on the clock. Just thank God they're in the house. Yeah. Instead of us celebrating that they're in God's house, the Pharisees are more concerned with what they got on. You have to get away from around negative people. When people come to you, with negativity, you can't let it get on the inside. Amen. Amen. I came to tell you today that God is a circle breaker. Some of you, you've been going through that cycle, cycle after cycle. And I said, this ain't for everybody, but it's for somebody. God is saying, I'm a cycle. I'll break that thing from you. These Pharisees and negative folks, they were more concerned about the things of this world and not the spiritual things. I was at Daphne this week. We Pastor Paul's and we just left a meeting and I, I went down to Daphne and I get to a stop sign and as I'm approaching the stop sign, this man with a sign, he comes walking up to my window. And it was one of those awkward ones. You ever seen somebody homeless that you get to the stop sign and they just come to your window and they just place the sign right down your window. And, and I'm looking straight ahead because I'm saying, look, I don't have anything on me to give them right now. And it was just awkward. And I'm just, I just look straight and I see you looking at the window. And I said, man, I'm just you're embarrassing me because I want to help you, but I don't have anything to help you. I just keep, I just kept on going. Like, please turn green, this is awkward. God began to speak to me. He said, that's how the church do people that are hurting. They see people that are hurting, but yet we keep looking straight. We keep asking by. He said, well, God, let me go to the ATM machine. <laughs> Forgive me. God says, I'm here. I want to help you. But do you want to be here? 
do you want to be healed? He said, if you want to be healed, stop making excuses on why you can't get your healing. He says, get up out of your mess. And anybody that's not good for you, he said, you got to cut them off. Father right. God, we thank you today for your word. We thank you for the visitation of your Holy Spirit. Yes, Lord. God, we just want to tell you that we love you. While we were yet sinners, God, you died for us. And God, we just told you to thank you. Thank you, Lord. God, I know that you don't desire that one should perish. You don't desire that we would live in a place of hurt. So God, I pray you give us the courage to cut it, whatever's hurting us. I pray you give us the courage to get up from that hurt. Oh yeah. Help us to walk in victory, God. God, we speak life into our dying situations. Can these dry bones live? God, you know what we're going through. Oh, yeah. And we speak life into a dry situation. So God, I ask that you would heal your people. Yeah. Everybody on the side of my voice, God, I ask that you would. We, we all are dealing with, uh, with, with hurt in some area of our lives. God, heal us so we can walk victorious. God, thank you for each and every person that came into the house of God today. God, we thank you for the visitation of your Holy Spirit. Oh, yeah. God, we thank you for visiting us today and reminding us, God, you're always with us. Now, God, if there's anybody here today that don't know you're the part of their sins, God. If there's anybody that have not experienced your love, God, I ask that you would draw them today. That you would touch their heart. God, they will come and say, I give my life to Christ today. Oh yeah. Because I'm tired of hurting. I'm, try, I'm tired of doing it on my own. I need Jesus in my life. God, would you do that for us today, God? Save like only you can. In Jesus' name. Amen. 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 Listen, if God was speaking to you, as we said that prayer, gave that invitation. If you don't know Jesus as Lord and Savior, I said to just raise your hand. You say, I want to give my life to Christ today. I don't want to leave out this place not having that assurance where I will spend all eternity. If that's you today, raise your hand. Doesn't matter who's looking at you. When you stand before God, the people around you don't matter. Will there be one today? Amen. Will there be one today and say, I, I want to partner with GLF. I just love being here. I, I see what the Lord is doing through this ministry. And I want to partner with GLF. I want to be in the movement. See God's hand on it. If that's you today, partnership. We tell you every Sunday you can partner here and be a member somewhere else. Would that be one today? Partnership. Amen. God bless you. Amen. We want to thank each and every one of you for coming out with us, coming out and worshiping with us today. If this is your first time with us, we're not going to ask you to say anything. We just want you to raise your hand so we can recognize you. First time guests. Amen. One, two, three, four, five, six. Amen. Jill, can we praise God for our first time guests? Hallelujah. We thank you for coming and worshiping with us. Come back and see us. Amen. It's giving time. Amen. It's giving time. Hallelujah. Listen, we are a ministry that loves giving because we understand the power, the blessing, and 
sow and repay. So today I ask that you continue to do what you've always done. And if you have not experienced the overflow that God has promised us through giving, you say, I've been, I've just been holding out because, you know, something somebody told me that, uh, Pastor, I can barely afford to pay my bills. And I said, you can't afford to pay your bills because you're taking what's belonging to God. If you give God what belongs to Him, He'll take care of the rest if you're being obedient to Him. Amen? We're at 14,000. Amen. We're at 14,000 of our 40,000. Amen. We're about 45 days away from moving into our new sanctuary. Amen. Do you know if we need this to be up here? You got it. We just need it. Amen. Y'all don't want me to do this by myself. I know y'all want to help me come together to get there. We thank our partners. We would not be able to do what we do if we had not been. If it's not wasn't for you, God leading you to be a blessing to this ministry. Amen. My God, we thank you for the gift. We thank you for the gift. God, we know that it's already done. We speak it. We're going to move in on time. It won't be delayed. We know that there are many that are praying against it. We know there are many that don't like it. But God, we know what you said in motion. But the doors that you open, no man can shut. So God, we thank you for an open door, God. We thank you for an open heaven, God. Because God, we place seed in the ground. God, we thank you in advance for what you're doing. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. We're about to let you go, but we got a couple of announcements, one or two announcements. I know the women's ministry, they are going there. The greater women, their white party, that's going to be July 15th, 7 p.m. here. Amen. We want all of our women, please get with Sister Saul. Uh, I, I, somebody showed me their white outfit. They're all excited about wearing their white. So get with them as they have their introduced the evening with greater women. Hey, we will not have Friday with Pastor Love this week. I will be a revival Monday, Tuesday, and Wednesday, February. Amen. Enough. Stop the vibes. Become a mentor. Uh, tomorrow, 7 p.m. at the Dream Center, we're asking all, uh, last month, we asked that all men would come. We had a, a nice crowd of men and leaders in the community. This time we're opening up to everybody to come. As we communicate and talk about how we can deal with the violence in our communities and come together collectively. Uh, last month we had judges, we had police officers, we had pastors in our community, we had all these people come together. We, we got brought some good ideas to the table. We wanna, we're going to have another meeting to follow up that we talked about last week, last month, tomorrow, Dream Center, 7 p.m. Amen. Everybody stay to your feet.